Welcome to episode 206 of the Muck Podcast. Listen in as we discuss the dark and sometimes weird true stories in American politics. I'm Tina Jaramillo. And I'm Hillary Doherty. Hillary. Jesus. <laughs> it is such a production. It is a production. This whole thing, believe it or not. I mean, it's quite what a are we doing? Mm. We do all this for you. Right before Tina hit record, she goes, I don't even have lip gloss on. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. Who needs lip gloss? I mean, I need all of this. I do need, I need all lip of this. gloss. No, yeah, you're good. You're good. Fine. Um, oh, I, I got to tell you, this okay. is so funny. So, <laughs> like your <in> days. <laughs> so, so um, where was I? I don't Oh, I was out with a friend. We were having lunch. And uh, it was a place that I go to, and the lady there knows me. And oh, she's like, your cool. skin is just glowing. Bitch, I hate it. I and I was this, like, yeah. oh. What it takes for my skin to glow standing I, next what? to Tina yeah, is ridiculous. I, I, hours uh, of work, hours. So then I, I, I tell my husband, I go, oh, guess what? Yeah. My skin is glowing. And he was like. Why are you fishing for a <laughs> I said, I'm not. I said, I'm just letting you know that you are with someone who has glowing skin. Oh, he knows, bitch. Oh, please. Ooh, he's so in love. No, he's, he's not. He's got those love eyes. No, he yes, does. he does. Yes, he does. <laughs> what is this? Why would you argue against that? Anyway, like Judge Judy says, you're winning. Doesn't it sound, doesn't it sound like you're winning? Oh, Why would God. you argue against it? Because he's, you know, a uh, little curmudgeon. Uh, well, mostly. okay, but still, you know. Uh, oh, that's right. We have a new we party. had New Year's we together. New Year's. <laughs> at Tina's house. At Tina's house. Oh, I made bruschetta. How was that? Oh my god, we ate all of it. Thank you very much. All Thank of you very it. much. Bruschetta. All of it. Yeah. And oh I brought god, over bread. Cool. And, Dang it. No worries. And I brought bread over. I'm like, can I use your oven and toast this bread? Yeah. <laughs> I feel terrible. It was so. Everything was so good. Oh my gosh. I could. I could. I mean, I was also floating, but everything was like so tasty. It was so tasty. Mm. Manny ate the rest of bruschetta. Like you guys left, and he was just like, Whoa. yeah, it was good. It was very garlicky. Yeah. Mm. Garlic so everything. Good. Garlic everything. Yes. So. What else? Nothing. Uh, my brother went home. My brother was visiting. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to say too much about this. I met Tina's brother. I met one of her cousins. Uh, both men. Tina is a firecracker in this family. That's what I determined. <laughs> and at one point, your brother was like, I had to grow up with this. Because she was like, you know, doing her Tina thing. And he was like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And they're both very quiet men. Yeah. And like, you know, sit back, relax men. And Tina's just like... Like doing her thing the whole time. It's adorable, but also like she's the firecracker, right? In the family. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. It's fantastic, by the way. I don't know how it happened. Well, I think you filled a void. Maybe there was the <laughs> you know what I mean? Like there wasn't a firecracker in the family. You had to come oh. along and like blow it up. My aunt is a firecracker and um, okay. I think I get some of it from her. I love it. I love yeah. every second of it. She's so also, cute. um, so today's January 6th. We're recording on January 6th. And I said to Tina, oh, God, January 6th. And she goes, but I know it as. Oh, yeah. The, the You know, like the Bufana comes and, and delivers all the presents in Italy. Because it's the like the Feast of the Kings or whatever. Yeah. Right? Or not the. It's like when the Not a Kings moment came. goes by that I'm not reminded <laughs> that we're Italian. Not a moment. Not a moment goes by. Um, are we oh, ready? My cousin has Italian tattoos everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I said, what's this tattoo? And he lifted up his shirt and there was a Italian, a whole plaque in the flag. And I was like, cool. Then he had tattoos on his legs when we were leaving. And I said, what's that? It was a, oh God, what was it? What was that? Remember. An eagle. And it says, it says eagle in Italian on his leg. And then he has an Italian thing on his side. And I was like, Oh, Jesus. the shield from the town. Yeah. 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 This is where, this is from yeah. where our family's from. I'm like, Jesus, Madonna. <laughs> everything. <laughs> everything. It was like drilled into you guys to be proud of this. It was drilled. I mean. It's going on to your son who's yelling I mean, at me about <laughs> Little Italy. <laughs> you know I'm Italian. I was like, yes. I, it's crazy. How could you forget with this family? Oh, my God. I don't know. Is it because we're, like, first generation? Maybe. And, like, they just, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. I but know. it's, 
Your kids are the same way. <laughs> I know. Well, because I don't want them to like uh, not know like the, of course. the family. Of course. I don't know. No, I get it. Lord. Oh my God. I mean, what the hell? Yeah. So anyway. What, what do we have to talk about today, people? What is it? What is it now? I what know, is, what it is it now? I know. I have just a few things. Well, one was a January 6th thing that was a, it was an event scheduled mm. in oh, Florida. And yeah. Marjorie Taylor Greene was like the host or like the special guest. And um, then like the hotel or whatever found out that it was like, you know, in celebration. Celebrating! Of, but they, they tried to like market it as something else, but like... In the end, it was all about January 6th, and so it got canceled. What is this, by the way? Why what is we, this? Why are we celebrating this? I don't know. First like, of all, the way that they've repackaged this is fucking yeah. wild to me. But the thing is, too, it's like it wasn't an insurrection. It was a protest. Like, now they're, like, they're celebrating a po- I don't know what. You know what? Let me tell you something else today. I'm going to be very interested to see what Trump is like. Sending out on his social media or oh saying because God. he better keep his fucking mouth shut. No, I hope he says as much as he can. I mean, he really, really shouldn't say a fucking thing. To, he shouldn't even have a, a an event scheduled today. Um, I like, remember, what do you think about the whole SCOTUS? Like, I don't know. They said yesterday that they're going to take up the ballot initiative in Colorado. So they're going to decide whether he can be on the ballot or not. Plus, Jack Smith is, is they're also going to be looking at the case yeah. of can he be tried for these crimes? Yeah. Where he incited an insurrection. I mean. <laughs> that's And then the Biden campaign a couple days ago put out a really great ad. Like their first ad of 2024. And it is going after. And he gave a fucking amazing speech that is incredible. Going after Trump and January 6th and democracy. That is all, in my opinion, Biden needs to run on. Yeah. That's it. I don't want to hear about he's too old. What has he done? We don't even need to talk about those things. What will he do? I'm not interested in that conversation. We just there's one thing. Yeah, yeah. one thing we know is that Trump cannot be reelected. And if Biden's our guy, just talk about January 6th. He tried to overturn an election, the basis of democracy, our voices. He tried to stifle them and throw them in the garbage. What we wanted as a people. We cannot have that person back in the White House. No. That's all Biden. Just run that fucking ad and and hammer that home. I don't need to hear about another fucking thing. There was a great, um, I think it was in Vermont. There was a Republican there that they were talking to outside of this like event. And he said he's voting for Biden. He said, there is no way on God's green earth that he could ever vote for Trump. And this guy's like, well, what if uh, he, he's, it's rumored he's going to oh pick Nikki Haley God. for his VP. Who cares? And the guy goes, I don't give a fuck. There's nothing you can do. One person stands for democracy and the other one doesn't. His whole reason for voting for Biden was because of January 6th. That's how, so that's what go. it should so be. There we go. That's what, then that's, that needs to be. And I'm, I'm hoping now, you know, these Iowa numbers are fucking wild. And so I'm, I'm praying to God, like they're all for Trump. It's fucking crazy to me. He's going to win the primary there. But oh, like no, he's going to win the primary, yeah. I just hope that moving around in the country there's other Republicans or registered Republicans who feel more like the guy in Vermont and not like the people in Iowa because you need to really get some clarity here about what we're talking about. January 6th was a big motherfucking deal. It's a big deal. We cannot no, allow them to rewrite that history. Well, and Imagine how it's going to be re- rewritten under a Trump administration. Yeah, in the education and, books. And Trump is never going to leave. Yeah, no, no, no. He'll no, never no, no, leave. No, no, like, no, we'll no, be with no, the Trump no. family forever, right? It's yeah, going to be one I'm after not, the other I'm until not. Barron is our president. You know what I'm saying? Oh, my God. Now, listen. You know, it's, it, that's what they want. I, I, I have to say, I think that Trump is a giant fucking con. Like, we all know he's a con man. Yeah. And what they're trying to do in New York right now, this this civil suit that uh, they have in New York that he's been going to court and going to court for months. She said in the beginning, the the attorney general, that probably about two hundred and fifty million dollars he's going to owe in fines and right. fees because of how much he scammed off of people and uh, off the government by increasing the price of his property, lowering the the value, oh, such a sh- all that shit he was doing. That's what he's in well, civil not court to, for. Not to mention all the damn money from foreign governments and China. Yeah. Like the guy who's like China, China, but he sure took a shit ton of money, didn't he? Yeah. Where are all the people that are like 
after you know any Democrat. This is why they want this and that. This is why they, they want to they Biden. don't Yeah, if they don't look at, at Trump, who took like what was it billion? Seven point eight million million. But so she's now saying that so that case they're going to do their 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 arguments next week, like the week that this this episode comes out. They're doing their fi- final um uh what's it called? Whatever final arguments. Yes, and so. She's asking now for three hundred and fifty million dollars worth of damages, which we already know he's guilty. The judge has already said this is not a trial. You've right. done bad things. Now it's just figuring out damages. So now that's what's going to happen. He's going to be found guilty ne- within a few weeks and of that. Happens? Before the end of January, we'll get a guilty from that judge, and the damages is he is up to the judge to decide. So it could be three hundred and fifty million dollars in damages. From val- overvaluing or undervaluing his properties, I'm what, sorry. He's a. And by the way, he getting that money, I, he doesn't have it. I know. He does. It's just the judgment of right, it all. Right. Like when you have that kind of judgment, you can't do X, Y, and Z moving forward. Yeah. And one of the things that she's asking for this AG is that he never is allowed to do business with real estate and property Ooh. in New York State ever again. Let's go. That now, would be incredible. It's incredible, but also it goes to stopping that trump legacy in yes. new york yes because his father started with this kind of bullshit like it destroys such, that family business they're so shady and disgusting yeah and, and to walk around like they're important and they're good people i was looking at um um some photo i forget what oh it was that laura trump came out and was talking about i don't even remember because she's so stupid but all of these Trump women look the same. Oh, girl, it's they so all gross. Look the same. And this girl, she's like 41. I thought she was in her 50s. Yeah, it makes them look older. But also because they're, they're so, so angry. so angry It's and gross. Ugly. Like, whatever's happening on the inside is coming it's out, yo. It's so ugly. I'm like, this lady's 41? No, no, no. Holy no. shit, she looks like she's in her 50s. Yeah. She and they all have this weird same like Melania like yeah weird there's a severity of the makeup the hair is and, and weird and the Botox and the hair yeah I don't it's know. a mix of like a Kim Kardashian look with evil it's like an yeah. evil Kim Kardashian look you know what I mean yeah with the hair just, part in the middle it's, the waves it's, it's just like it's so plastic yeah it's so gross. Well, they're bubbleheads. Well, really? they're doing what they need to do to stay around all of that. You know, yeah. that's what they're. Who wants to stay around that girl? Get out. They do. It's uh, fame horse. Yeah. You know, like it doesn't matter if the fame is good or not. They just want to be in the fame. And guess what? All those fucking people, all those loudmouth motherfuckers, those January six people, the guy in Miami who was a loudmouth, he just got twenty two years in jail good. for a talk show, a, a, a reality show host. I know. You put all your you put your freedom on the line for a fucking for a, clown. A, a, a Cheeto face I know. idiot. Like what are you thinking? I mean, Trump should have just stayed with his stupid show. Like by the way, I've I... never loved a candidate that much. No. Or elected I official. Was, so I was like leaving my neighborhood the other day, and there was this old man in a huge Let's Go Brandon shirt, MAGA hat. He had crazy socks on, and I was like. What compels someone I don't to know. deck themselves out in such a way? Yeah, like that's something you would see at a convention. It, Not I walking know. your dog, He's bro. walking his dog. What the it fuck? It weird. You know, it is a cult. There is cultish cult. things no, no, happening no, no. It's, there. It's 100% a cult. Yeah. Anyway, oh my God. glad I'm not in that cult. But um, speaking of cult, and here's something that happens when you're in a cult. So the Colorado Supreme Court says uh, Trump can't be on the ballot right. there. Within a week... A guy broke into the Supreme Court and opened fire. Yeah. This is your people. That is the sort of violence that he is inside. By the way, in and out of the press. Like, you saw it for a minute, that story. That, But that's that's what will happen. That is a mini version of what will happen in other places if they buck Trump. Including what will happen when he loses come November. Oh, my God. I don't even know. It's It's going to be bad. It will be very bad. I think so. And, but I think that that group, the violent sort of prone people, is getting less and less because if you look at what happened January 6th, there's no way a, a right-minded person, all these people who are going to jail are like, yeah, fuck, I shouldn't have done that. Right. Like, oops. And hopefully like, it they're shocks telling, them out like, of. Like, hopefully they're telling people. Yeah. You know, like, dude, don't do this shit. It's really fucked up. Um, the other thing that happened in Iowa was that uh, we had another school oh my shooting. God, Tina. 
By the way, Trump said yesterday, well, the shooter killed himself, so y'all should just get over it. Yeah. And DeSantis, his comment oh. was like, well, you know, the federal government really isn't going to be doing anything. This should be like a state, a local state level. Like, screw you. Local, like a local state like how like, Florida, Florida is now filing bills right now to lower the age to 18 and to take away the three-day waiting period yeah. for, for shotguns and rifles. Is that, that's what's happening in the fucking Florida house right now? Yeah. And this kid that killed these people was 17 years old? Yeah. Killed a sixth grader? What the I fuck? Know. It's terrible. You know what? And then Nikki it's Haley's like, mental health, mental health, mental oh, health. Oh, you know what? Screw you. You don't want to fund any mental health. Yeah. So if it is mental health, what are you doing about that? Right. What are you doing about it, Nikki? And why isn't there any laws that are red flag laws? At that pit that you know, like the, like start somewhere. They don't want to start anywhere. They don't want to. They say, oh, it's not guns. They, it's this. Right. Well, then what are you doing about that? They're not doing. Then anything. what are you doing about it? I saw an ad. You know, not it's not until one of their children is killed that something will actually happen. That's what. They, that's the honest truth. That's the I don't honest to God's know truth. If it would change some of their minds. And how fucking insulting to everyone, which there are a lot of people who have lost someone in a mass shooting at this point. I know. Like it's got to be in the millions of people. Who've been no, affected by this. And, and also, she said, you know, it's really a tragedy and it's bad for the kids. It's so sad for the community and the kids that were witnessed there or in there. She goes, but they'll be fine in a couple of years. Really, what? bitch? Go ask the MSD kids wow. who are still suffering trauma today. fine kids. Yeah. They still suffer trauma My and are God. terrified. The, the trauma that these shootings even cause causes more mental health issues. The mental health issues that you all are so, 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 uh, this, they're so important. But yet, yeah, they don't. we're okay with more people being affected by this. Did, did you see the ad? There was an ad, and it's a woman, like, running out to oh, the a pool. pool, and, like, the little girl's, like, drowning. <laughs> yeah. And she's like, oh, my God, oh, my God. And people come out, and they're like, oh, thoughts and prayers. Yeah. I have my thoughts, and they just watch her drown. Yeah. It's so good. It is good. And that's so the- good but that's what's happening so good it, it shows just how ridiculous it is because then at the end like uh, people are just like walking by like oh thoughts and prayers because nobody gives a fuck anymore yeah. and one of the other things nikki yeah. haley said was we need to have a secure one of uh, entry and exit from the school we need to have an officer at oh, that door and i said I, I retweeted and i was like yeah msd had an officer that yeah. worked out really well that motherfucker out hid mine? in his car outside for 30 minutes why are we... Well, this kid murdered people inside. Why are we jailing our kids? I was watching some TV show, and, like, the kids were, like, going on and off campus, and we were like, what world is this in? This can't be an American school because so kids can't up. go anywhere no. and do anything. I, I'm so fucking sick of it. It's all bullshit, and, you know, again, if we want to be losers in 24, gone. You want to fucking make the world harder for the kids coming up behind us? Go ahead. Right. That's what you're doing. That's what you're doing. These motherfuckers don't give a fuck about you. And it's so, you know, we talked about uh, the Florida legislature and what will happen coming up. So I've been reading a lot of articles because the session started this week yeah. or it starts uh, Monday, so I guess. Now, yeah. And uh, here are some of the bills that all our Florida state legislators think is important. Right. They think these things are important right now. Oh, HB 395, Protection of Historical Monuments Memorials. Oh, yeah. That's because we can't take down, you know. The, are we still having yeah. these conversations yep. about the stupid yeah. uh, Confederate statues? Yes. yes. Isn't it, are That's, we tired of this We're going to protect statues. But, you yeah. know, fuck your kids. Yeah. Fuck your kids. Yeah. In school, protections, fuck you. Yeah. But that monument of well, some fucking yeah. racist slave owner... Well, that that needs monument, to be protected. But, you but can't fuck your read life, it and you can't read books. Yeah, and... fuck your life. Nice. Fuck your your daughter who needs to have an abortion. Yeah. Fuck all y'all. We don't yeah. give a fuck about any of you. Good luck during the next hurricane. Yeah, when none of you us can't afford here any, anymore. Yeah, we won't have any insurance. Yeah. Uh, okay, so HB nine hundred one display of flags by governmental entities. Uh, quote, government buildings, including uh, public schools, universities, from erecting or displaying certain flags and requiring those entities to remain neutral in certain circumstances. So the circumstances is, that are is, listed is, are is LGBTQ. representing a political viewpoint or anything politically partisan, racial, relating to sexual orientation and gender or political ideolo- ideological views. So where you city of have, manners puts yeah. up the, the rainbow you can't flag. Have a rainbow flag. That's, this is all about a rainbow flag. Yep. Yep. Um, I didn't write down the 
bill number, but I saw yesterday that there's a bill that's being put forward. Now these are all going to go through committee. They might not make it to the floor, but these are so the stupid. outrageous ones. This one was about punishing universities that have clubs oh, where yeah. um, they support um, terrorist groups like Hamas. Yeah. So if you have a Palestinian... Um, just uh, because there's a Palestinian club doesn't mean that they support terror. Like, so, like well, haven't we done this already? Didn't we do this already with 9-11? That just yeah. because someone is Muslim does not mean that they are part of, you know, um, uh, uh, an extreme terrorist organization that happens to be Muslim. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, we did this already. Well, guess and what? And we, we terrorized people already. If you're part of a group that's a Palestine sympathizer, is what I was trying to, the word I yeah. was thinking of, um, the student, they could change their tuition from in-state to out-state, out-of-state tuition. That's the penalty. Oh. Yeah. Which is like, what, isn't three times as expensive? Yeah. Isn't this a violation of the first time? That's amendment? in the bill. That's in the bill. Um, HB 129, damages recoverable and wrongful death actions. Now, this is wild to me. So, quote, remove the provision that prohibits adult children and parents of adult children from recovering certain damages in medical ne negligence suits, end quote. So, if Tina, what if something happens to one of Tina's parents that's medically negligent against the doctor, the hospital? Right. As an adult, you can't sue and get damages back. Like, you as a person, like, say your mom it, dies in that way. Right. And it was clearly... A uh, mishap, malpractice right? Malpractice. As an adult, you're not owed any damages. You can't get money for that. Wow. Why do they only want to protect? As if we're going, as, as if it's a jackpot at yeah. a casino. Oh, mom died, and it was done. Something right. bad happened. Now I've got to make money because you know I. I gr it's like right. about greed or something. And yeah. the fact of the matter is, like you did something way, wrong. Yeah, they did this in Texas, right? Remember Abbott. Abbott, Abbott, Governor Abbott is in a wheelchair, if you all haven't noticed. And he was running on a path and a tree fell and it crushed his legs or something. And that's why he can't walk anymore. He sued the landscaper, the house, whatever right. the fuck. He got all kinds of money and still gets money like every so right. many years now because of that but accident. Now no one else but then can. when he became a lawmaker, he changed the law and closed the loophole so nobody else can do that in Texas. This is the same thing. Well, bring, give the money back. Give the money back, Abbott. And why can't we hold people accountable for doing I mean, something wrong? Their parent died. Their parent or their family member. And you can't hold anybody accountable for that? So much. It's fucked up. Um, let's see what else. There's a couple more. Uh, the, the employment curfew, HB 49, which is for, for, for minors, which means that they can work longer right. hours at a job. Um, HB 753. Uh, they want to make the flamingo the state bird. Oh, I'm sorry, let me say that again. They want to make the flamingo the state no, bird. Okay, one, who cares about the state bird right now? I don't know. How's your, how, how's your homeowner's fire. insurance, Tina? But your homeowner's insurance is fine, so don't yes. worry about it. The flamingo? Yeah. Okay. I mean, a peacock makes more sense. Listen, some cracked out pigeon makes more sense about who the fuck lives in Florida. It's currently the mockingbird. I don't know if you yeah, knew that. Yeah, I okay. didn't know that. A mockingbird I, is like the state bird of so many states. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> So, of course we don't. Of course we're not original. Um, <laughs> HB five nine nine gender identity employment practices. It expands the don't say gay bill in the workplace. Um, prohibits government employees or contractors from being required to use their colleagues' preferred pronouns. So remember two years ago when they told us don't say gay yeah. was to protect K through three, mm -hmm. kindergarten through third grade because we don't want them getting sex education yeah. at that age. But now and we were like, this is fucked up. This is fucked up. They're going to expand it. The following session last year, they expanded it through college. Yeah. Now they're expanding it into the government workplaces. Yeah. And next session, it'll be in private practice. Right. What you can and can't do in your private company. That's what will happen next this year. This is insane. Uh, do they realize like no one is going to want to bring their business here? No one is going to want to work here. Like, we have to get out of this state. I know no, we I say know, it all the time. So this, the this out. came out yesterday, and it's going to be, this is going to be big, and it'll probably pass. Um, so Senate Bill 1752, and there's not one in the House. Like, they usually have one in the House and one in the Senate, and they come together. There isn't one in the, in the House. And former House Rep Carlos Guillermo Smith posted about this yesterday, and he said they'll just ram it through the Senate, and it'll get on the House floor, and they'll just put a vote to it. Because there isn't a matching one in the house, but SB 1752 is about elections. Oh. 
yeah. It basically eliminates vote by mail. The vote by mail will no longer be in the state of Florida. That was filed yesterday. And when you go into the specifics, there's only a very small, specific amount of people who can use vote by mail. Like bedridden. Veterans. Bedridden. Um, jail. If you're in jail. Like, that's it. This is outrageous. And now we already just told you, I think it might have been, actually, I don't know if we talked about this last week or two weeks ago, but they already last year passed a bill that so goes so far to limit vote by mail because that's where Democrats vote. They vote by mail. So they did this thing where every year or every two years, you have to renew right. your vote by mail. Now, this, you this is or you're off the road. And this is a group yeah. of people who don't pay attention. And so the work that they gave the supervisor of elections in every county is tremendous. And so they started already to get people off the voter rolls who did not renew their voter registration or their vote, vote by vote mail by registration. Yeah. In Broward County alone, it's all, and they go by party. They'll look and see how many people were thrown off in each county. Broward County alone, 85% of the vote by mail where Democrats are no longer registered to get a vote by mail. And they're, they, and do they know? I'm sure Joe, uh, election supervisor Joe Scott has done his best to get his information out. But my mother was one of those people and she tried to call up and she's like, what are you talking about? She's been registered to vote here for 44, 43 years, has never had this issue. And now she's like, trying to scramble to figure out what the fuck she calls the office. Oh, no, no, you're fine. Then she gets something in the mail. It's a fucking mess. It's a mess. And it's not clear to people, am I registered? Am I not registered? Yeah. Like, and well, and here's the other thing. So they eliminate the vote by mail, but the other thing that they've done is also they have um, eliminated the amount of places where you can actually go vote. Right. So like, There's no drop me, boxes. Well, yeah, they've got rid of the drop boxes, but even like for me, like I used to be able to go, like I could walk to where my voting place is and that's not the case anymore like now i gotta go drive somewhere because they've eliminated the number of places mm. right which makes it harder for people because now you got to go to some other place you got to figure where's my new voting place mm. and i remember one year um because the other thing that gets confusing for people is early and they've also shortened the early voting time because right. remember, it was like a longer number of days, and now it's a shorter number yeah. of days. Jesus Christ. Um, but I remember being at, at the polls one year, um, and uh, it was like almost 7 o'clock. You know, the polls are almost closing, and this girl pulled up, and she was like, okay, I'm here. And I was like, no, you're at the wrong place. Oh, my God. Because they just think, like, because with early voting, you can go anywhere, but on voting day, you have to go to your precinct. And she was like, oh, forget it. Yeah. That happens there's a, lot. a vote that goes away because, yeah. like, you know, people just go, oh, I, I see people lined up here. I mean, it really should just be, good. just go vote wherever yes. you can vote. If you are registered in the state of Florida, you should be able to vote in any, or in your county. Just go vote anywhere in your county. Like, they make it harder and harder and harder for people to get there. And even the 7 to 7 is hard for some people. Of course. That's the whole point, you, you know? know? That's the God. whole point. I don't know. I just think these bills are fucking wacko and there's still going to be more coming and they're going to get worse. And I don't know how far, like I said, with the, the guns, you know, 17 year old kills people, killed a person and injured other people in a school in Iowa. And the same day on the front paper, I think it was the Florida Sun, it says the 17 year old murders people at a school. And the next article right next to it was Florida looking to lower the age to get guns. It's, it's... I mean, it's fucking madness. Just get rid of these guns already. It's madness. Oh. Shame. It's, it's shame on all of you. And it, it's also like a race to, like, who could be the stupidest? Who can file the dumbest fucking right. big I bills? Mean, we're definitely, between us and Texas, we are neck and neck. Um, the Epstein list on. isn't out oh. yet. I mean, the, their, their documents are coming out, but it's slowly but surely. Oh, there's some names on them. I'm very interested to see that. Oh, what about the that. whole Stephen Hawking thing on that list? I, I don't know about... I saw some memes with Stephen Hawking about it, but I, don't, I wasn't sure what yeah, it was. they said that he was, like, involved in, like, can, like can under his age. Work? I don't know. Hmm. Interesting. It's gross. <laughs> Like all these men over there, these are well, like thirteen year old girls. Yeah, that's the part that's that's the part that's upsetting. Is like arguing about is Trump on it or whatever. These these girls need justice. 
They need justice. Yeah. And exposing these motherfuckers, these Expose princes, all of them. and Ugh. these 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 uh, elected officials, these it's just rich these motherfuckers. With power. They're I, disgusting. I, I, it's, I hate it all. They're disgusting. And and it's both sides of the aisle. Absolutely. Clinton. Uh. <gasps> I don't doubt it. He's a fucking pig. He's a fucking pig. Yeah, he's always been. Yeah. Fuck you. Jesus. By the way. Um. Um, what else? So, oh, so I saw another Moms for Liberty story, and so we know we have the Moms for Liberty story here yeah. with uh, the woman sitting on the school board, and she was involved in uh, a throuple and all of that. Totally fine. <laughs> we are not shaming anyone for that kind of stuff. The only thing is that, you know, when you go um, on a rampage to prevent other people from having relationships or expressing their relationships or you know, reading books about LGBTQ stuff, and then you're having a secret thruple is kind of fucked up. But there was another Moms for Liberty. Um, her name's Brie Mogenberg, and she is the chair of Moms for Liberty, and she dresses up like Wonder Woman when she does events. And she had an affair with a married person, um, the second congressional district state chair for Michigan, uh, the Republican Party there, um, Andy Siebold, and the wife, like, put this a whole post out about What? Like, oh, I love the wife this was so like, much. The wife is like, God recognizes you're just a side piece Whoa. and, like, put all this shit out. And I'm like, oh, okay, Moms for Liberty, family values, but you're having an affair. And again, I don't care. People have affairs all the time. But when oh. you're someone who has a platform where you're touting that you were this God-fearing, family-value-loving person, and then you're doing this, like, you're a hypocrite. And and you you chair Moms for Liberty? Like, it's just... Wow. I love hearing... You know, we talked about it, Moms for Liberty gone wild. Like, yeah. you know, <laughs> that is the, that's the thing that needs to happen, right? Oh, my God. You know, and have... Wouldn't that be hilarious? I mean, it does. They seem like reality show contestants, yeah. anyway. Ugh. You know, they just, they're so angry for no reason. I don't know why we're upset and why we're screaming. What what yeah. is going yeah. on here? Uh, they gotta relax, these ladies. Yeah, I mean, I, I know they like to say radical feminists. These are ra these are radical women to me. Yeah. To me, they seem they're radical, not, but they're not feminists. No, they no, think no. that they are though. That's I know. The thing. It's okay. They're very. It's it's a oh, whole very sad situation. <laughs> and then on a happy note, in a happy note, oh. is the verified petitions. Oh, finally, so, the supervisor yes. of elections in the state finally put that out that we yes. had over nine hundred thousand signatures on yep. the abortion, put abortion on the ballot. Yep. And now we just gotta go through stupid Ashley Moody and her stupid, you know, language of uh, viability. You know, what does yeah. viability mean? So the Florida Supreme Court's going to hear that case February 7th. Yeah. Um, hopefully we get an answer soon. I mean, and that's... it'll be I on the mean, ballot because there's a lot of hard work down, put into And then that. they're going to shut down 900,000 people. You know what I mean? And that's bipartisan. It's not just Democrats yeah, signing that petition. Are you ready? Um, yes. Okay. Today. Yes. I'm going to tell you the story of the Italian Hall disaster. Jesus. The what? The Italian Hall disaster. H-A-L-L? -L? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So. Oh God, these Italians. Well, there's actually, there was a, a couple Italians. The, the name of oh. the place oh, okay. was just an okay. Italian Hall. <laughs> By the way, I want you to be proud of me. Okay? I'm making pots. Pots. Of sauce. Yes. All right. I am I so them, proud of I you. I put them in a bowl. I put them in my fridge all week. I'm using a little bit oh. of sauce for this. A little bit. Of, I the my Italian. You know I've got Italian roots. Yes. It's coming through, honey. I'm loving it. Did you come to my house? It smells like an Italian's been cooking. Ooh. All right. I'm here for it. I a blonde Italian. I mean, listen. <laughs> can I say I'm more Italian? beautiful? Yes. <laughs> am I paisan? You're paisan. <laughs> At least by I'm a, a paisan by association. I know that. <laughs> Oh. Well, definitely Paisan. Yeah. All right. So, <laughs> Union Strikers oh boy. were joyously celebrating Christmas in the oh Italian no. hall. But when someone yelled fire, <gasps> tragedy engulfed the hall, extinguishing the festive celebration. That's a good one. You That's like a good that? line. Yeah, like you that? did good oh. one. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, our story takes place in 1913 uh, in Michigan. Calumet? Oh. Calumet? No idea. Yeah. So, all right. So the whole, just a little background, the whole issue behind the disaster begins 
with the local miners. So specifically in July of 1913, the Western Federation of Miners, or the WFM, they called a strike against all mines in Michigan's copper country. And according to Wikipedia, this was the first strike within this area. So strikes are happening like around the country and then, you know, unions are kind of solidifying and this union is a pretty big union because it's covering, um, you know, a large area. And essentially what they wanted is what a lot of unions fought for. They want shorter work days. They mm. want higher wages. They want union recognition. So one thing that I thought was like interesting with this particular story was how these mines were run, which seemed to be one of the reasons for the strike. So um, the mine was run on what was called paternalism. Hmm. And paternalism, I was like, what is that? Like, I didn't understand it. But so paternalism means that it's run with a leader who treats the employees as family, right? Huh. And it sounds good. Yeah. But it's like Olive Garden, right? But in return, yeah, when but, you're here, you're family. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Oh, wait a minute. I just, <laughs> I just had a flash of that re werewolf that was dying in uh, that FDR American Badass. I had an idea. <laughs> he was shot. It was, Muss was it Mussolini? Yes, yes, yes. I have an idea for a restaurant. <laughs> it's called Olive Garden. And when you're here, you're family. <laughs> that guy, whoever wrote that is a fucking genius. Oh my God, so funny. <laughs> Sorry, Tina. <laughs> so, but in return, you have to abide by particular rules mm. and be obedient like you would be okay. to, you know, listen, listen. the father figure of the family, right? <laughs> listen. And even outside of working hours. Uh, all right. We got, now we need a union. Yes. Now we need a union. So this is not my papa. Yeah, all right. This yeah, is not this my is daddy. This is, yeah. So the way things work for this mine, the miners lives were looked after very closely. And mm. this kind of happened because of lo the location of the mines. Right. So a, a lot of them were out in these rural areas. Right. So the mines would give, you know, the families working there, they would provide housing and education. So yeah. they're like building kind of like a little town around these mines right right and like in centralia like yeah, yeah hospitals all of that but if the miners were doing things off hours that the company didn't like mm -hmm. like they could get rid of them so like if someone was drinking too much after work or like at the bar or whatever they would be like okay you lost your job because you're not you know following the values of the mine you know what i mean and it's like yeah. one thing to like okay like hey you're working here but you shouldn't uh be policing no. people's private But it's also lives. 1913. Yeah. And they probably feel like they can do whatever the fuck right. they want. Right. So another article by Memories of the Prairie noted that the mining company, and the mining company was Calumet and uh, Hecla, they could evict families whenever they wanted, but only giving them like a 15-day notice, which is like, oh you got two weeks to get out. And that's like, that's not a lot of time to no. like figure out like, where am I going? What am I doing? All of that. And this is the other thing. Widows... Right, so like their husband dies in the no. mine. No, right, the kids, their dad dies in the mine. They were like, "Boom, you're evicted." You oh, get, some yeah, family, yeah, some yeah, fucking you're family, done, right? So they and it would be this 15 day notice, like, "Yeah, oh my god, your dad died, but bye, oh, you gotta get out." This is this is fucked. So the other issue that they were having um, problems with is the drilling device. So I guess like. Um, God, this just reminds me of like John Henry, you know, died with a hammer in his hand. You know, the myth of John Henry because he wanted to go up against the drilling machine and he's going with his hammer. And it's like, you know, a commentary on industrialism. Yeah. I don't I know. I used the to story, read it to my kids I don't all the, the story, time. but I get the point. Yes. yes. So <laughs> <laughs> I got it. So they had a drilling device that used to be like a two person drilling device. Okay. But then they knocked it down to this one man drilling device. So now it's like, you know, one less person. Right. And it's like maybe a little more work. And so they didn't like that. I, the, the miners were like, we want the two man drilling device back. And I guess it worked better for them, whatever. This is like the, this is like the do it yourself checkout now. Right. And every guy, Publix now has the yes. do it yourself checkout. All, and I say to my kids every time, that's six people that don't have jobs anymore. Yeah. That, that really upsets me. It yeah. really upsets me. Yeah. I mean. And also now I'm I'm bagging my own shit. Yeah. I, no. I don't want, I want some, like, 15-year-old kid like Tina I that mean. works at Publix. <laughs> I want my kids, some yeah. kid bagging my shit. I mean. Break the eggs. I don't care. At least the kid's right. working. And like, yeah. I'm mean, learning a job. Yes. And, yes. All right. Sorry. So two people on the drill. So, yeah, they change it to a one-man drill. And the other issue, of course, are those hours. So typically, the miners were working between 10 and 12 hours 
long a day, which mm. that's a long day. That's yeah. like six to six, you know, and it's intense labor. It's yes. not like you're sitting at a desk or something. Oh my God. And inhaling they, shit. Inhaling all that stuff. And they would only get one day off a week. Oh. So at the time of the incident, minors were like just joining the union because like they want to see some changes. Yeah. So the union first, um, the one thing they wanted was recognition because if like the company doesn't even recognize that there's a union, like how are you negotiating, right? And so that was one of the things, but the mining companies um, wouldn't recognize the unions at all. So they wouldn't even want to negotiate with someone who's a rep from the union because mm -hmm. they're like, yeah, you guys don't even exist. And they just want to deal with the miners right. and they're not going to give the miners what they want because, right, which is why they need the union. Right. So... Um, again, uh, the Western Federation of Miners, they had chapters developing all across Western, U uh, uh, all across the Western U.S. And in this case, with this mining strike, it wasn't the national organization that went up against this mine. So it's just like, you know, they have the national one and then there's ch local chapters. It was a local chapter mm. of the Western Federation of Miners that went up against this mine in this particular incident. So, um, the, the... Um, WFN had about 9,000 members vote to demand that the mine recognize the union and they asked for quote a conference with the employers to adjust wages hours and working conditions in the mm. Copper District of Michigan and since that was not granted they went on strike in July of 1913 okay okay so the major incident so oh now a few God. months have gone, gone by and here we are it's Christmas Eve Jesus, that's a long time to not be working. Yeah, it's Christmas Eve, Ugh. 1913, and the WFM, the Western Federation of Miners, yeah. is hosting a party for oh the miners. God. And there's close to 400 people in the Italian hall, and it's just what it sounds like. Like, it's a hall for yeah. parties and weddings and oh events. Oh, my God. And my dad was in a carpenter union. I remember you know? all these Christmas parties. So one of the members who organized the party, and this is like a little side note, but I was like, oh, I love this lady. Yeah. <laughs> so her name was Anna Klemek, and she served as the president of the Women's Auxiliary Number no. 15 of the Western Federation of Miners, and she fought for union rights. She led marches. Oh, bitch. She was a badass. Badass. During one of the strikes, the National Guard came in and tried to take her flag, Yeah. and she stated, quote, kill me. Run your bayonets and sabers through this flag and kill me, but I won't go back. If this flag will not protect me, then I'll die with it. <gasps> Holy shit! Let's go, girl. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Like, she was out there fighting. She was young. Wow. Young. Like, I love, like, just these strong women, like, just God fighting bless. for people. There's so many women like that that you'll yeah. never know their names that are behind those yeah. those movements. So she's, like, part of the group that, like, is hosting this Christmas party. Mm -hmm. And so supposedly everyone's packed into the hall, and someone then shouts fire in the <sighs> middle of this packed thing, and people start panicking. And um, one of the articles I read, it was, like, right when the kids were, like, getting their presents, and um, a stampede ensues. Oh, my God. And because they wanted to escape, obviously, if there's a fire, they want to escape, and people right. just go crazy. But the way that the hall was set up, the fire exits were hard to get to because you had to, like, climb out of windows to try to get to the fire exits. They weren't, like, easily accessible. Okay. And they weren't clearly marked, right? So, like, people are just, like, going crazy in the this space. So Joe Holt, a historian, said of the strike, quote, What happened is when people panicked, they tried to get out through the stairwell. Someone tripped or people started to fall, and that's what created the bottleneck. It was just people falling on top of each other. No! But the thing is... Oh, no, Tina! There was no fire. It was one of these fucking people? Someone... The... Well, we'll get into that, but someone just shouted it to cause, like, chaos, and the incident led to 73 deaths, <gasps> and the majority of them were the kids. You believe this? Okay, I hold know. on. I'm this sorry. is so fucked. I know it's Christmas Eve and like. No. I know. What the fuck, Tina? So afterwards. Because they were under the people piling yeah, up? Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, oh, like they everyone, were crushed. They're crushed. Oh my god. I know. Oh my god. I know. It's a, such an upsetting story. 73 people? Yeah. Who the fuck killed fire? So we'll get oh, to that. Well, you better fucking. So, there better be jail time. There better be fucking jail time. Tina, no! Tina. So afterwards, oh 
God, this they is... They carried the bodies you know to what? the town hall. This is what I she know. does. She wants to give me... this Saturday morning. I'm trying to enjoy my coffee and bullshit. And she's telling me about 73 people. I this know. Is, why? Why do you do this I to know. me? I know. I'm sorry. I just... I saw the Christmas, story. And then she goes, it's Christmas Eve. Yeah, I know. I know. It's fucking horrible. Like, you can't get worse. <laughs> It get worse. So they carry the bodies to the town hall and they want to sort things out. And that's when oh they realized God. that some families had lost more than one child. Oh. And some children were orphaned with both their parents dead. I mean, oh my it's God. Just a mess. Oh my God. Um, and Clement, that lady, she oh. ends up in jail because she punched this non union minor. Like things just got crazy. So, who in their right mind I, I, would cry fire in a crowded room. <laughs> oh, my God. So when investigators arrived, they questioned folks there. But many of them, there were a few Italians there. Um, but I think a lot of them were, like, Croatian. They were okay. just, like, you know, foreigners. And they didn't speak English. But they were forced to answer in English anyway. <laughs> and finally, so so they didn't get much information because, like, there's this language barrier. Fucking cops. And, you I know. know. Can you guys get it? Think about it. If it's like the mining town, you know what I mean? Oh, Whose right. side are they on? Oh. So finally, the U.S. House formed a subcommittee to look into the incident, and they had interpreters, and supposedly, like, they brought interpreters in, and supposedly a majority of the witnesses all claimed that the guy who cried fire was wearing a Citizens Alliance button on his coat. Now, Citizens Alliance was an anti-union, anti-strike organization. Oh, my God. So the idea is that this guy went in deliberately and did this in retaliation of the strike. Now, we don't know who that is. We don't know. So oh! No charges, oh, nothing oh my because, God! Like, no one knows who this guy is. Oh, my God. Oh, I, I'm I so mad. I'm so fucking mad, Tina. I know. So How is this possible? How is that possible? They, I mean, I think, like, just, there's a lot. So, so okay. So, some of the aftermath, a Michigan Live article noted that the disaster was a lot for this little small town to handle. And they had to, like, express ship coffins into the town because they didn't even have enough coffins for the number of people dead. And it's fucking dark. they dug trench-style graves to accommodate the dead Oh, as well. my God. And several churches, they all held, like, the ceremonies at the same time. And it evolved into, like, this one long funeral procession to the cemetery. And um, a couple of the accounts that I read note that Clem, uh, Clemnick, the, the woman, the auxiliary leader, she carried her flag and she, like, led the pr- procession. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. And, you know, this is a party that she put together. and like. Oh, my God, this woman. I mean, oh. so, like, news spread about this incident and 20,000 people like showed up for this fun- for the funerals and it was minors from other towns and like you know other union folk and there's like I, I have a couple photos of like the procession and stuff and another historian Joanne Thomas told Michigan Live that the tragedy impacted the town for years but she noted quote of course some people couldn't bear to speak of it the community just wanted to forget it and ignore it and bury it that's how people dealt with tragedy in the past without the counseling tools that we have today. Like yep. they were just like, yep, yep, let's move on. Yep. And imagine like you have to still work there and like I don't know. So, wow. Here's something that is crazy. Oh, really? It's crazier than what you've just said. So, at the time a committee is put together by the Citizens Alliance, the anti-human oh, group. interesting. To raise money oh. for the families mm-hmm. who lost the loved ones. Oh, okay. They raised $25,000, but they didn't take the money. And now this group gets pissed off. They're like, we raised this money for you. Take the fucking oh. money. Oh! But... <laughs> you know what? So they mm. tell this guy, no thanks, the union promised us aid. We don't need your money. Because we're, you know, the union's going to take care of us, right? And so, according to another New York Times article, the union leader, this guy Moyer, he was telling the folks, do not take any money from Citizens Alliance. Like, they're the ones that did this. Like, you're not taking their money. Yeah. And then, folks from Citizens Alliance tracked Moyer down at his hotel, and they demanded that he retract the statement that it was one of their members who yelled fire. And Moyer's like, fuck you. I'm not doing it. He refuses. Damn it, I love these people. So this one article I read says, 
that the witnesses saw Moyer getting on a train with men who seemed to be guarding him. Oh, I believe it. Okay. Oh, yeah. But yeah. then he disappears. Wait. Okay. Wait a minute. Moyer. Did he take the money? No. Okay. <laughs> so then I read another article from like a couple days later, and it explains that Moyer was kidnapped. Those guys go to the hotel. What? They shoot him, blindfold him, and they take him out of town. They're like, get the fuck out. Like, leave. Like The Citizens Unite Alliance? Yes! They take the union guy, they shoot him, and they're like, get lost. Like, we don't want you here in the town. He comes back with his, they said, the report states he appeared with a gunshot wound in the back and covered in blood. What? And he stated, quote, I struggled and fought, but a smash on the back of the head from an automatic pistol put me out. They knocked me to my knees, and then someone fired. I felt a scorching pain in the back. Oh. I tried to protest and fight, but to no avail. They dragged me into the street, kicking and cursing me. So, but Moyer kept at it. He he put forward a letter to reach an agreement with the strike. Like, he's like, I'm not leaving. Like, he came back to town and, like, gave oh this whole statement and everything. And ultimately, like... The strike wasn't successful. Like they went back to work. Like they, oh, I think no. they were trying to get the eight-hour day. I think they did shave some like hours off, but like all the stuff they wanted, like it didn't happen. But you would think the companies, after what had happened on Christmas Eve, would be like, we need to get it yeah. together now. Like this is not okay. So despite I, those deaths, the tension remained between the miners and the mining company for decades. Yeah. So I, I know this is a story. It's crazy. crazy. For what? What do you hold on to? A couple extra pennies? I mean, I mean, it, it's you know, so it greedy. reminds me of it's the Gilded greed. Age. Greed, greed. It reminds me. Is it Gilded Age? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It reminds me of that. There's a whole union story where they were going to shoot those guys, and he stopped them from shooting them because it would have been a, a whole tragedy. And for what? For what? A couple hours off the day. What? I how mean, much are you actually so, saving? It's so greed and capitalism. Yeah. Just is so so destructive. So a uh, couple points of interest, Western Federation of Miners eventually turned into United Steelworkers. Wow, which cool. Which is, you know, yeah, you know yeah. huge. Um, Woody Guthrie yeah. wrote a song about it called 1913 Massacre. Wow. And one of the lines goes, quote, the copper boss thugs stuck their heads in the door. One of them yelled and he screamed, there's a fire. So he's like, wow. they're the That's ones that the did, it, did it against the miners. And oh it came out. Oh my gosh. Um, every year... They still light 73 luminaries, like these lanterns, in honor of each of uh, person who died. Oh, my God. And currently, there is a 10-foot-tall memorial installed near the site where the Italian Hall once stood. It was torn down in 1984, and then they put this memorial up to honor the people. Wow. And that's the story. Oh, Tina. I know. It's so fucked up. It's, it's so, so messed up, up but it's... That guy Moyer, like they they yeah. shot him and we're like, get out. And he's like, I'm coming back. Wow. Her like, too. The girl yes. her too. Like leading that procession. I was like, I gotta look into this girl. Like, she's I, I wanna know more about her. Yeah, I mean it's an incredible story. She was like young, like in her twenties, you know? It's the the thing that's sad and it and it uh, how we can apply this story today is that we watch tragedy over and over again and we can stop it. You know, the, 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 this, what is that? The triangle shirt factory fire. Remember that oh. in New York and, and all those oh, yeah, women yeah, yeah, were, yeah, yeah. and all girls women, were yes. working in the factory and, it, and that same thing. Yes. And there had to be better labor conditions that had to happen before changes were actually yeah. put into place in like these garment districts of, of I mean, forced labor and, and be forced into these buildings that are unsafe you know, why do we have to have so much tragedy for something for something to happen? Helicopters we, coming out of the sky. Right. And why we, do we need to have uh, any sort of regulations that are are followed after a tragedy? Like it shouldn't right. take that much. And that's why we need unions. Oh, Union, yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah. if there were no unions, like everyone thinks, oh, someone wouldn't do that. You bet your ass, someone will milk you for all that you've got if it's going to make them more money. They don't care about you. No. Like, you look at these CEOs when you look at, like, the auto strikes that have been happening and that one, like, Toyota CEO, her bonus was, like, a million dollars. It's like, you're sitting on a million dollar bonus and you can't give people a fair living wage? Yeah. Come on. And they're making all the stuff. And what do you do? Yeah. I really think they need to cut the bonuses. Yeah. Like, make your fucking salary. And those bonuses should go back to the all of the employees and split it up equally or something. Like... I don't know. It's it's so gross that the few people in their mega yachts and all this shit and like 
you know, um, um, when you hear stories like the Amazon, the guy who had a heart attack and they put boxes around him and make the employees still work while their colleague is dead, while they're waiting to have him removed Jesus in a Christ. warehouse. Like th this isn't humanity. And also think about what it does for morale when you do that with a bonus. Like I'm not going to take my bonus this year. I'm going to split it up between everybody. Right. Those people want to work harder for you. Right. They want to come to work. Like just a little bit of kindness, a little bit of gratitude goes a fucking well, like, long how much way. How money do people need? I don't know. And I, and I think too. that they're like, so far removed from like what things cost now. You know, they're so far removed from that. Yeah. It's wild. Wild. I also want to be that rich. I want a million dollar fucking bonus. Oh my God. I don't even know what I, I honestly, I'm always I like, know, I know. No, no, my no, shit's no. paid off. Let me take a vacation here and there and I don't have to work. I would be fine with that. I, I would be fine with it too. I'd like a million dollars in the bank, please. Yeah. I, I want that. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's what I want. Uh, I went and saw the movie Poor Little Things. Oh, I heard that was good. It's so good. Or Poor Things? Poor no, things? Poor Little Things. It's so fucking good. Or is it Poor Things? Oh, God damn it. I, I gotta think look it's it Poor Little Things. Are you sure? No. It's Poor Things. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote down Poor Little Things in my notes, but it's Poor Things. Yo, so good. Mark Ruffalo. I love him. Let me tell you something. I do too. He's so fucking funny in this movie. It's really just, it's really Emma Stone fucking the whole movie. Oh. She's naked. Hi. Beautiful. Uh, but she's just fucking, 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 fucking. Good like, for her. Uh, amazing. But Mark Ruffalo is so fucking funny. So. He's cute. There's a cute. He's adorable. He's adorable. Just, yeah. Yeah. And he's a good actor. Like, he yeah. can play such a range. Because mm -hmm. he was just in that weird HBO twin. Oh, yeah. You know? Yes. So, like, like he's, he's, he's got, you know, versatility. Of course. Yeah. But it's some amazing. actors don't. Some he actors was in that, are really, like, this is what they do. He was one of those. What was, that, what was that movie with the... Um, we just talked about this. The Boston, the Boston Globe movie with um, Hillary Docker. Spotlight. Oh. Spotlight. Remember Spotlight? With Mark Michael Keaton and Rachel oh, McAdams no. and him. And uh, it's about the the priests abusing children in Boston. Mm -hmm. That scandal. And they, how they exposed it. You've never seen Spotlight? No. <gasps> you know. have to watch it. No, 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 no. You have to watch it. And he, okay. Mark Ruffalo is so fucking good Ooh. in it. It's, it's one of my favorite movies, actually. I'll have to watch it's it. I get so upset with, like, stuff I know. with kids. And... They, they talk about things, but not in the way. It's more about... It's it's at the time when we didn't realize what a huge scandal that was yet, and you this kind of blew the top off of it. Up, yeah, like it was wild. It started with the articles in Spotlight. Like it oh. really started with these huge, right. like exposing it. It's really good. But okay. anyway, poor little things, amazing. I might go see a movie today because I get the kids back tomorrow. <gasps> Thank God, it's been too the long, babies. Uh, my babies. <laughs> And so uh, I'm excited. I'm excited to see them. But that means school starts on Monday, too. Oh, so we're back in it. We're back in it. <laughs> back in it. In it to win it. Yeah. It's just like there's so many I hate this time of year. and swim meets. and Yeah. I hate when we have to. Have to this is the holidays is over. Yeah. I, I, don't, I just, don't like it. It's just going to be jam-packed. For the next few months. Oh, well, this is the life we've chosen. <laughs> <laughs> we decided to have kids. And I mean, now, now this is what we, we have are. to do. We're schlepping them all Although no one schlepped me anywhere. So. <laughs> Don't get into that now, Tina. Okay. Don't get into that. Right there. What did my parents do for me? <laughs> I love that, too. I always say to my kids. Do you think my mother would let me talk to her like this? I know. Do you know what happened if I if I said this to my dad? You know what he would do? <laughs> it's such a different, it's so different, the dynamic. Oh, please. My parents didn't know where I was half the fucking time. Oh. We were out in the streets running around having a great time. I, I think it's better, though. Like, I feel like the kids don't, like, they, they, like, they, uh... They don't have as much... My parents didn't give a fuck where I was. They didn't know they didn't care. I don't want my son on his VR set too long. Right. That's the difference. Yeah. I'm like, I really don't think it's a good idea. He takes it off his red on his face. I'm like, I don't know. It's What's, what's going into your brain? Yeah. My parents didn't know where I was. The yeah. 80s, 
you were free as a bird. You were free. I but hear that, a whistle. I hear some, my dad whistle outside, and I knew I had to come home. you get some, like, independence. You know, you get, yeah. you know, like, and, and I don't know the impact of not having that freedom and what it does as they grow into adults. I don't know. All right. Yeah, well, I don't I don't know. I don't know either. On that note, <laughs> I got to get to a soccer game. All right. So well, that's good luck to you. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Go back to the life that I've chosen. <laughs> Bye. Bye.